steps of my king. Pastor Shane recently spoke with Malachi O'Brien and Ronnie Floyd on the subject of revival. The beginning of this conversation was unrecorded. This episode picks up with the discussion already in progress. We hope that you enjoy this segment of Pastors Unplugged. What would you advise me to do in my life? Um, and, um, and, and ha- so I can be what I need to be. And he, RT said, you know, I just let him talk. And I thought about it and I went to him and I said, you just need to learn not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Yep. Exactly. That's a pretty big statement. That is. When you look at Ephesians 4, I mean, listen, guys, that is a profound answer. Just think if you could live the rest of the day, Shane and Malachi, and never grieve the Holy Spirit. It's wow. Amazing, amazing concept. And that is the, that's the balancing act because, you know, what do you, what do you, what do you try to steward? I mean, you can tell when people are getting a little too carried away. You can tell when it's not going in a healthy direction and, and just being, you know, open to the leading. And I also noticed from that, from 1995, you probably were more vocal, you know, back then, but also, just a passion for our nation and not oh, necessarily, yeah. not necessarily politics. Right. But I mean, right. politics, right. politics is, is governing yeah. life. The Bible is a political yeah. book in some sense. Right. So how did you, from that revival experience, you actually became even more bolder for against abortion and, and Man. for, um, uh, I don't know what the word political hot buttons or hot button issues. And were you often labeled as too political because of that? Not um, back then as much because people didn't care back then. Back you know, then they didn't care. Yeah, you know, it was totally different. Social media has changed all that, True, where yeah. everybody feels like they have to pick on everybody and categorize everyone. Yeah. Um, but you know, there is a there 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 was that, and I and I unapologetically always stood strong in all that, and mm-hmm. uh, people knew that. And but you know the other side of it, Shane. God started opening doors and letting me do things I'd never done before. Right. It was pretty obvious to the people, um, you know, that only the Lord would open those doors. And Absolutely. you know, I didn't open them. I didn't get on the phone and say, "Y'all need to do this for me." And that, I, I didn't. I don't operate that way today. No way. I don't have people. No Why well, you need to have me in your church? I, <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. No, you know, for That's promotion not does not come. From the north, south, east, or west, but God is a judge. He puts down one, He sets up another. Psalm 75, 6 and 7. And so, you know, we have to uh, just move forward as the Holy Spirit opens the door. But, Amen. you know, I remember in the last, uh, what, you just take, let's say since 2015, okay? Um, that's when all this discussion has started moving towards, well, how. You know, are you going to be too political? You know, and, and I got in that discussion yesterday in a round table with pastors because that was quite honestly, that was their number one question. How do we shepherd through that? Yeah. I mean, they, they, this, this group is totally, you know, they they are, they were all assembly of God pastors. Oh, wow. they, they had an assembly of God, uh, pastors round table for about 15 pastors. They asked me to do that. Okay. And so I came in, I've done two or three of them before for a different group this time, somewhat. But I mean, that was their number one question. Mm-hmm. Now, that's, that's people not of what we would call my tradition, who are definitely mm-hmm. evangelicals. Mm-hmm. OK, but but at the same time, you know, I, 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 I'm with them. I'm with anybody that believes the Bible is the word of God. Jesus is the only way to salvation. And the world needs Christ. I'm for yeah. it. You know, and that's where I live. And, and, you know, I just told them, listen, you got to stand up and be a man of God and preach the word of God and let the word of God be the word of God. Yeah. Period. And you do it in, in the name of Jesus under the Holy Spirit's power. You don't go looking for fights. Don't pick on fights. That's right. nuts. Don't do that. You're going to lose your leadership because you're immature. Right. Don't do that. But but you gain leadership when you're willing to get out there and stand. But Shane, this is the this is one of the key issues in the church. What's going to happen if a generation of pastors who do believe the scripture right. choose to say, "Well, I just can't deal with that because you know it's political." It's political. If it's biblical, it's not political. Absolutely. 
you know, don't don't let some uh, person out here categorize something as political. Uh, what does God call it? You need to be preaching the word, not not, you know, somebody's blog out here. Uh, right. I don't care what they think. You know, I'm telling you, if our nation is in massive trouble yep. and if men of God don't find a way to stand on the scripture and call it like it is and call this nation back to God, then who in the world is going to do it? Absolutely. Who's going to do it? And I would say, aren't the pulpits partially responsible over the last couple, of, last couple of decades? You know, Absolutely. You, just, you know, the silent pulpit is not God's pulpit. And we've just yeah. bought into the, um, you know, the, the, uh, what well, it goes back to what you said earlier that men have got to be men filled with the spirit of God. They've got sure. to be broken, humble. Then from that's going to come the boldness. And so I know you've got to go. We're probably an hour into this, but just the takeaway for the pastors and anybody listening, obviously, I think the big takeaway is from what I'm hearing, f- full surrender, yeah. absolute, absolute, absolute repentance, not perfect, you know, but we repent, we surrender, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm a clean slate, get rid of these things in my life. I don't, I don't want to be popular. I don't want to be deal with this besetting sin. I want to give you everything. And I need the power of the Holy spirit to guide yeah. me and guide this church. And they consider fasting. Yeah. I mean, we didn't get into a lot of it. I've written about it. I've, I've done extensive research on the physical, spiritual benefits of fasting. But the main thing is I'm starving this bodily appetite that is so controlling. It, I want my caffeine. I want my donuts. I want my sugar. I want my lust. I want my sleep. I want my, and what you're doing is you're silencing its voice so you can better hear the voice of God. That's it's, right. a, it's exchanging one appetite for a greater appetite. And, right. and really the right. flesh is losing its, 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 its uh, a power over your life. And, mm-hmm. and you're really, you're, you're, it's submitting. And I think, I think it's a lifestyle of fasting. If you read the early church fathers, Justin Martyr, Augustine, Polycarp, yeah. Irenaeus, I mean, fasting was a big part of it. The, the Didache or Diocte, the they had to fast before they got baptized. And you'd see Wesley would require fasting on Wednesdays and Fridays. Now, that might become legal, maybe legalistic to some, but it was a lifestyle of fasting because you won't, you won't ever, well, let me just give over to the flesh for six months and I'll start January 1st. Sure. <laughs> it, it is a, it's a right. lifestyle fasting. So any closing thoughts for the pastors on how to, how to get to that, that point of surrender? Well, as a testimony, I'm, I'm older than both of you guys, you know, yeah. and um, and I still practice fasting and prayer. Yeah, I'm in day eleven today. Oh wow, that's and you know, I don't know how long the Lord wants me to go. I just know that I've got to pursue Him. Mm. I need Him. Mm. I need His power. Mm. I need His anointing. I need his direction. I need him to open doors. I need him to use me like he's never used me if he chooses to use me. Mm-hmm. And if he doesn't choose to use me, then I want to pray to him and with him and with others with such a passion and such an anointing that 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 maybe somebody will catch the fire. Mm-hmm. I want to be a man on fire, period. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want to be. I want the pulpit to blaze. I want the Holy Ghost to fall when I preach. I want the Holy Ghost to get a hold of me. And you say, wow, you sound like a radical. I'm not a radical. Read the Bible. It's biblical. Yeah. It's biblical. I mean, go and read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5 to see if you're preaching like that, Pastor. Yeah, mm. true. You know, you know are now, you? Ron, Ronnie, on that note, how do you, you know, for me, it's always been, how do you, how do you make sure fasting is not becoming too much of an extreme, too much of a work? Exactly. You yeah. know, I think being led of the spirit is really the key on that one. It is. It is the key. And, you know, you you have to get to a point where you're not going to do certain things to somebody because you don't want to be you don't want to think that you're doing something to prompt God to do something for you. Right. OK. Right. You don't jump through a hoop. So God says, oh, man, he's awesome. <laughs> you know, God's going to do to me what he wants to do because he's sovereign. All right. He, it, but the issue is not God conforming to me. The issue is me conforming to God. Yes. And that's what yes. I want to be. And, uh, you know, I, I just think it's important for every Christian, whatever level, whether it's even just one meal every now and then or a day, you know, just take a shot at it. You know, and if you don't, that's yeah. fine. That's between you and the Lord. It's not between you and me, 
But yeah. all I know is, is that there is special power when we're willing to fast and pray. Yes. yes. And, you know, I'm reminded of Daniel, who I, I think one of the great stories of Scripture is when Daniel prayed for 21 days. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the Scripture doesn't record that. Then he wrote, um, you know, he didn't get his prayer answered. That's not what it says. But then on day 24, on, 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 on three days after the fast, yes. there was a, he, God came to him. The angel, yeah. And God revealed to him the future. The future. And why, why didn't you come? I couldn't come. I was in a battle for you, dude, in the heavenlies. Mm-hmm. And, and I finally got through the battle because Michael the archangel came and helped. Right. And here, yeah. this is the word. Well, and guess what? That's why we believe Jesus is coming, and we believe he's coming soon, uh, partially because of what we read in the book of Daniel. And Amen. we read Amen. to open so many other things in the Holy Scripture and the Revelation and beyond. Yeah. And Malachi, I'll let you go in a minute, but this is, I, I don't want to forget this because Ronnie hit on something so important. You, you don't want to go into a fast thinking, okay, God's going to reward me. God's going to give me this. The motives right. are wrong. What I do is so my heart breaks and lines up with the heart of God. I've never mm-hmm. had such sweet worship. I've never had God just breaking me and humble me. So he doesn't love me more, but I sure love him more. Yeah. And so it's. Right. It's Lord, I'm lining my heart up with you. That might, that might mean my church shrinks. That might mean I don't have any open doors to speak. That might mean financially we're, we're in a tough spot. Now we know God can open certain doors, but it doesn't, Lord, I don't care what happens. I just want to seek you and be filled with your spirit. And then out of the right heart, we do the right type of fast. Mm-hmm. And then God would, would honor that fruit mm-hmm. of that labor. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Malachi, any thoughts? I'm going to see if I have any more questions, but I think that's it. No, no. Um, and, and I honestly want us to like pick another day and continue this conversation because there's so much here. And I, I actually want to ask both of you story questions because it's the fame of revival that spreads the flame of revival. Mm-hmm. And people, I think, are more inspired to fast when they hear stories of right. how it's impacted people. So I definitely want to do that. We'll do that again very soon. But I want to ask this question to Ronnie in light of what's coming up for your church, Shane, which is Oktoberfest. Yeah. Pastor Ronnie, what would, how would you encourage a church to corporately fast together? Like, what are some things that would help the church do this together for effectiveness? Like, what are some things you might say they should pray for or be encouraged about? Because, I mean, this is something Pastor Shane has been doing for a while, but they're about ready to walk into this. What's some practicals that they could, some handles they could hang on to? Well, I think most, most important is that probably the Lord is going to speak to the man of God of the church to tell him or to share with him what the church should be called to fast and pray for. Um, I always like to provide for my congregation personally uh, four or five things that they could really pray for. Uh, for the church and specifically, for example, if you're going to have a week of, of, um, of, let's say evangelistic services, if you're going to do that, then that needs to be number one. I mean, let's, let's pray and fast mm-hmm. and ask God to, to draw lost people to hear the word of God and to help us to bring people that need Jesus and pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to fall upon the message and, you know, so on and so forth, response to God, those kind of things. I, I think that's critical. I think I would always keep before the church the need for two things, revival in the church, which starts with them personally, yeah. Yeah. and awakening in the nation. Uh, I just think it's so, so, so needed to always keep those in prayer. And I would just add one thing to that, Malachi and, and Shane. Um, thanks for the opportunity to just speak to that for a brief moment. But I think pride is one of the greatest issues all of us face, and the church faces, the nation faces, the world. And, you know, the Bible is really clear. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and in due season, he will lift you up. The book of Ezra, chapter 8, you know, then I proclaim to fast so that we may humble ourselves. Yep. David, what did he do? I humbled 
myself with fasting. I mean, he, he, he was a broken man. The point is, is that humility is the great need. Humility is so missing. And, you know, I really, I feel like I have not been good at that all my life at all. I, I'm, I'm a guy full of a lot of pride through the years. And, you know, I just, I just believe God's just really calling me to a life and to a commitment of humility, you know, and even where I've been in this recent season of my life, it's been God bringing that and pouring that into my life. Yes. And uh, so, you know, I think that's what fasting does. It humbles people. Yeah. You know, we stop pointing our fingers at other people. We stop comparing ourselves. We, yes. we stop doing all that senseless bunch of crud that we see. And boy, we just, it's God, it's us. It's me conforming to him and just want to hear him. I want to hear him. I want to hear him. And, uh, you know, speak, Lord, your servant is willing. Listening, yeah. And that's the heart that we want to create with humility. And, and we're excited to have you out. I don't, I don't know when people will be listening to this, but you're speaking at our church on October 30th, and we'd love to have people out if you're near Southern California. And then we're going into church services every night of the week, beginning October 31st. On Monday night, I'll be preaching, and uh, we're going into church services every single night that week. It's called Rend the Heavens, and of course, it comes from mm-hmm. Isaiah. Oh, God, would you not rend the heavens and come down and visit your people? And it's that call mm-hmm. of desperation. And so I think in addition to repentance and fully surrendering, I'm not seeing a lot of desperation. I see a lot of anger in our nation, but yeah. not, a, not a lot of humility. No. It's, you know, they're posting things on social media. They're going off on people. They're not fasting. They're feeding King's stomach, but there's not desperation. Oh God, I'm going to fast. I'm going to seek your heart. I'm going to cry out to you, whatever it takes. And, and they're weeping for the condition of the nation, weeping for their, their, they, they look in the face of their children and say, how can we leave this to you? There's mm-hmm. a, like Nehemiah. Why should I not be sad? The place of my father's tombs lies in waste. Right. And, and it's got to be propelled by that desperation. So I think that's a good closing thought. Unless Malachi, you have anything or Pastor Ronnie. I just want to say to both of you guys um, and everybody that's listening, everybody that's watching, and hopefully we get to do another uh, follow-up because I'm filled with a thousand questions for you guys. I'm going to pursue this. Okay. But um, I always want everyone to know that you, you both have stirred and encouraged me in, in fasting and seeking God in ways I've never even expressed to both of you. So thank you. And, um, to everyone that's watching, I hope that Shane, they'll go check out your website, read the articles, check out the fasting documentary that you did, because I think it helps people want yeah. practicals. Ronnie, I hope everybody in the planet reads your book on prayer and fasting. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I just hope that, you know, let's just press in together because I think there's hungry people. Let's press in together and continue to call this out. Ronnie, you've led the way and Shane and I are following and Katrina just mm-hmm. going to say, hey, it's God or nothing. It's not about the denomination. It's not about the generation. It's not about anything else. It's about God and God alone. So, mm-hmm. and Ronnie, maybe you could close us out uh, with prayer, final prayer for this, this whole area. Sure. It's so important. This is the key. We are holding the key to our nation. Uh, it's not sure. in a donkey or elephant. It's not in 2022 or 2024, as, as passionate I am. It's, we are holding the key uh, to spiritually healing our land. Uh, through brokenness and and revival. So definitely lead us in prayer and we'll close it out. Absolutely. Father, we are so grateful today. Thank you, Lord. For the conversation. Thank you that even talking about the subject and listening to various testimonies, thinking of scripture, thinking about things that are happening. Lord, it's it's it stokes my fire. Hmm. It makes me want more. And Lord, I just pray for a mighty outpouring of the Spirit of God on us, on us that are listening today all around the globe, Mm. wherever people may be. I pray for the pastors who are listening, and I pray the power of God would fall on them. I pray you'll put in them a yearning, Mm. a true yearning, a deep yearning that only you can do. And I just pray that they will know and they will really believe it, that our God can do more in a moment than we could ever do in a lifetime. Mm. So I pray you would do that with people. I pray you'll meet needs today. 
continue to give favor to shame, Mm -hmm. continue to open doors of opportunity, and may God be upon that church in a powerful way Mm -hmm. in the week to come. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, guys. Thanks. I'd love to do it again, Malachi. Just just let me know. I I do want to do it again. Um, I obviously I mean this. There's so much, guys. Like there's so much. I'm 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 just telling you as a media guy. Um, there's if we could do one or two more of these, there are top. We need to go topical on a few things on here, sure. Because we this we just in long form. But I promise you, if we did just one, we just could tell some stories. And then when we just do, we're going to hit something. I mean, I just, I can figure that I'm, this is coming to my mind as we're doing this. Yeah. And so, um, uh, I, I mean, I, I recorded it on two different things. So that's when you guys heard that recording thing come up because something had skipped on the other one. So I, I threw a second one to save us. So hopefully it got all of it. I'm pretty sure it did, but, um, okay. um, Ronnie, I just, again, I can't say it enough. You know, I, I mean, I know you probably got to go and Shane, you probably got to go, but, but Ronnie, you really have led the way in this, mm-hmm. um, and I just hope that I hope that encourages you with where you are right now. Oh, uh, I mean that. And Shane, I mean, good night. <laughs> You're in mm-hmm. California leading the way. Um, and I mean, I mean, we're in Baptist life, so to speak. Ronnie and I are kind of. We're, Los, we're right? in Los Angeles, Los Angeles County as well. Yeah. Ronnie, so. he, he has this thread with the John MacArthur world and the cares. I mean, it's Shane. It's, it's amazing. So uh, you're going to have a great time at that church yeah, we, and we try not to we're just like i'm sure you are we don't pick sides or or any ism calvinism armenianism right. charismatic it's what does the bible say yeah. i mean but let's just let's just hang our hats on what, what yeah, the bible absolutely. says yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah I'm, you know one of the things that i'm really concerned about shane is the is the um the the timidity of pastors mm-hmm uh, mm-hmm. Just being, being, uh, just that whole. They fear man. They fear media. They fear social media. They fear, they fear their buddies. They fear. I mean, it's it's just like I don't get it, man. I, I'm well, just you I'm hit just the nail. On the, you hit the nail on the head. It was it was they're not spending time with God. So yeah. from that from that prayer closet, brokenness and humility is going to come the boldness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if if that's lacking, I mean, I've. I can't tell you, COVID woke me up. I mean, so many pastor friends in my area, some of them stay close for a year, a year. And you know, we, we, we closed down initially, like the president said, but then we opened and we just were blessed ever since. And, uh, but just them getting upset at me and letting, you know, Shane, you're, you're disobeying Romans 13. Uh, some of them had, you know, depending on your view on the vaccine, doesn't matter to me, but they're having clinics at their church, you know, and, and pushing that and, uh, and almost apologizing for their skin color. It was just the most amazing thing I've ever seen, but it is a reflection of their spiritual condition. That's all it is. Well, the, the reality is it's what Raven Hill told David Wilkerson. And this is, I mean, this is, this, this is true. As much as we don't want it to be it true, and I, I say to you guys, because you guys are you guys get up way earlier than I do. Like I promise you, I know you both yeah. do. You both are up. You both are, get up at three thirty in the morning and walk with God. But Ravenhill told Tozer, most pastors don't pray. Right, exactly right. Most, and, and I'm telling you, and I, I don't know every pastor in America, but I would I would I would bet my life savings mm-hmm. on this next statement. Yeah. 90% of most pastors don't walk with God. And what you mean is real prayer. I mean, they'll all say, yeah. oh, yeah, I say a quick little prayer in the morning or on my way to work. But passionate, heart searching, soul searching prayer where you're just time with God and God's building and shaping in that prayer mm-hmm. closet. That that doesn't happen. So mm-hmm. yeah. anyway, I got to go, guys, on to the next right. one. But uh, Ronnie, we'll be in touch, too, about your books and lining everything all up right. as we get closer. Yeah, Great okay. to be with you guys. Thank you. Thanks so uh, much. Have a blessed one. 